Hi, this is a video about exponents and their properties. As an introduction, we use exponents to represent repeated multiplication of the same factor. The basic operation, <clears throat> as seen as 3 to the fourth power, means we take 3 and multiply it with itself four times. 3 is called the base. And 4 is called the exponent. If no exponent is present, it is understood that the power of the exponent is 1. Anything, any base raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. <clears throat> and most importantly, when you see parentheses around the base, it does make a difference. For instance, I have negative 3 in parentheses all squared. This means that I'm taking negative 3 and multiplying with itself twice. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Next, I have negative sign, and then 3 is squared. So your negative sign stays as it is, and you're squaring the 3 only. That means 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and it's negative. <clears throat> in example 1, we'll compute each of the following. Negative 7, all in parentheses, squared. What am I squaring? I'm squaring the negative and the 7. So negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. In part B, I have 8 to the 0 power. Any base to the 0 power is always 1. <clears throat> part C, I have negative 4 squared. I'm only squaring the 4, so you have your negative sign. 4 times 4, which is negative 16. Next, working with negative exponents. If you have a base, A represents any numeric base, or any base could be a variable too. A base raised to a negative power, if it's in the denominator of a fraction, you should literally just move it to the top of the fraction and the power becomes positive. If you have A to a negative power on the top of a fraction, you just move that A to that negative power to the bottom, make the power positive. Just because an exponent is negative does not make the base negative. A negative exponent does not affect the sign of its base. It affects what side of the fraction the base goes on. <clears throat> so I have 7x to the negative second. I'm going to write this over 1 just so that we can kind of see that it's a fraction or it can be written as a fraction. All I have to do is to write this in terms of having no negative exponents. I take the x to the negative second and move it to the bottom of the fraction. I get 7 over x squared. Next, <clears throat> I have 1 over x to the negative third. You take that x to the negative third, move it to the top of the fraction, it becomes x to the positive third. Last but not least, you have negative 2 all to the negative fourth power. I'll write it over 1 just so we can see how it looks as a fraction. I literally take the negative 2 to the negative fourth power and move it to the bottom of the fraction. The power becomes positive. So your job now is to evaluate negative 2 to the fourth power. It's positive 16. Next, we'll move to some of the properties of exponents, starting off with the product rule. The product rule is used to simplify when multiplying two bases together that are the same. So, for instance, I'll start off by doing example 3, part A. I'm just going to stick with the basic definition of exponents. I'm not going to use the product rule to simplify just yet. So, part A can actually be written as. 3 squared is 3 times 3. 
And 3 to the 5th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. <clears throat> In total, this is 3 to what power? Well, there's 7 3's multiplied together, so it's 3 to the 7th. There's an easier way to do this. When you're multiplying two bases together that are the same, you can just add the exponents. 2 plus 5 gives you 7. That's what the product rule is telling me. If you're multiplying and the bases are the same, add the exponents. <clears throat> so another way to do part A that would take a lot less work would be 3 squared times 3 to the 5th is 3 to the 2 plus 5 or 3 to the 7th. Same answer, less work. <clears throat> so in part B, let's use that shortcut to save us a little bit of time. x to the 4th times x to the 6th. Yes, you do have bases that are the same. They are being multiplied together. This is x to the 4 plus 2 or x to the 6th. Part C has a little bit more action going on with it. You have a 2x squared, y to the first power. Negative 3x to the fifth, y squared. This is all being multiplied together. So I'm going to group this and write this a little bit differently because you can write multiplication in any order you want without changing the value of the expression. I'm going to stick with multiplying my 2 times the negative 3, so multiply those coefficients together. I'm going to put my x's together, x squared times x to the fifth, and put my y's together, y to the first times y squared. <clears throat> 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. x squared x to the fifth actually gives me x to the 2 plus 5. And then you have y to the 1 plus 2. So I have negative 6, x to the 7th, y cubed. That is the final answer. Now we'll talk about the quotient rule. The quotient rule is used to simplify when you're dividing two bases together that are the same. <clears throat> so we'll illustrate the quotient rule in part a. x to the 6, that means x times x times x times x times x times x. x is multiplied with itself 6 times all over x squared. Notice you can cancel out two copies of x on top with two copies of x on the bottom of the fraction, leaving you with just x to the fourth. You could have easily obtained that power of 4 by subtracting 6 minus 2. <clears throat> That's what the quotient rule is telling you to do. So here's how the quotient rule actually works. If you have x to the sixth over x squared, this is x to the 6 minus 2 or x to the fourth. Notice you started your subtraction from the six, the bigger number. What would have happened if we would have started the subtraction from the bottom, from the 2? Well, you would have gotten x to the 2 minus 6. Since you started your subtraction from the bottom, you would have to put your result on the bottom to get 1 over x to the negative 4, which is really x to the 4th after you make it a positive power. So the key thing with the quotient rule is wherever you start your subtraction from, which I recommend always do the bigger number, that's where you put your answer. <clears throat> In part B, let's first do negative 15 divided by 3. That's going to give me negative 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then with the y's, 10 is bigger than 7, so I have y to the 10 minus 7. Everything's in the top of a fraction. So I have negative 5y cubed.
In part C, I have 18 over 3, which is 6. X to the 10 minus 5, which belongs on top because the 10 is where I started from. And then on the bottom, I have Y to the 7 minus 4. 7 is the bigger number. It's on the bottom, so that's why 7 minus 4 has to go on the bottom. This leaves me with 6X to the 5th over Y cubed, and that's your quotient rule. Thanks for watching.